Welcome back to another How to Play From All You Can Board. I am Dylan and this is Rocket Men, which is a brand new game from Martin Wallace and Phalanx that just started to be delivered from Kickstarter. It was a Kickstarter campaign. This is a deck building game where the deck building that you're doing and the cards that you're adding to your deck are all facilitating missions that you're trying to launch to three different planets, Earth, the Moon, and Mars, and you're racing with your opponents. This is a space race game to be the first ones to these planets, to be the first ones to complete certain mission objectives as they will gain you more points if you're the first one there. All of this also has the added unpredictability of the mission success deck, which will be flipping cards over to see whether your mission launches are successes or failures. And sometimes even the most planning you can do will end up not being able to deter the fact that you're going to draw a bunch of zeros in a row off this deck and just completely crash and burn, even though you thought you had prepared as much as you could. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'm going to teach you how to play Rocket Men. Set up Rocketman, first place the game board in the center of the table. Shuffle the mission success cards and place them in the center of the game board. Set aside the engine cards, asset cards, and threat cards, and then go through each deck and remove cards depending on your player count. For four players, use all the cards. For three players, remove all the cards with a four on them. And for two players, remove all the cards with a three or a four on them. Sort the engine cards by type and place them into these three spots on the board in ascending order of price and power left to right. Divide the asset cards into two piles, teal and pink. Then take the threat cards that have a number one in the bottom left corner and shuffle those into the teal deck. Shuffle the remaining threat cards into the pink deck. Put these two decks face down, then place the teal deck on top of the pink deck to form the draw pile. Place this on the board in this spot. Flip six cards face up and put them into the six spots next to the deck at the bottom of the board. Place the moon and Mars tokens on the moon and Mars spots on the board. Take all items of your chosen player color. That's 12 cards, mission tokens, achievement tokens, and the player board itself. Shuffle your personal 12 cards and place them on your player board here. Draw six cards for your starting hand. Each player puts their victory token on the zero spot of the scoring track and also place the rocket on the zero spot of the mission track. Finally, shuffle the personal goal cards and give each player two randomly. Randomly determine who goes first and that's it. You're ready to play Rocket Men. So Rocketman has traditional deck building rules. And what I mean by that is you're gonna start with 12 cards, but you're gonna be adding to that deck by buying cards from the display. When you purchase a card from the display, it's going to go into your temporary playing card area. You can almost look at this as sort of a, a temporary discard pile. At the end of your turn, everything in your playing area is going to go into your discard pile proper. And then those cards will get added obviously back into your deck when your deck runs out and you have to shuffle them. So any card you buy, you're basically buying this card to eventually end up on your deck in a future turn after you've shuffled the discard pile back into the deck. Before we get into the flow of a turn, let's quickly go over the anatomy of a card in this game so that you can understand what everything means. The large number on the bottom of the card is the cost. This is how much you need to pay in order to buy it from the display. The icon in the top left corner is the item or money value that this card provides. If it shows an item, such as this biotechnology symbol, it means it can be used to help pay for a card in the display that specifically requires this symbol, like on this card here, or it can be used in your launch pad to help launch your rocket. More on that later. Finally, the main text body in the center of the card shows its ability if it has one. Threat cards are slightly different and are only worth victory points, as indicated by the number two symbol. Their cost is at the bottom as well, but there is an exclamation mark symbol that indicates that the cost increases depending on where your player marker is on the scoring track. You'll see symbols on the scoring track that increase the purchase cost of these cards. For instance, if you're on or past this marker, these threat cards require an additional 10 credits to buy. If you're on or past this marker, they cost an additional 20 credits plus one additional symbol of any kind. The last type of card are mission cards. These are the 12 cards you begin the game with. These are specifically used to embark on missions to Earth, Moon, and Mars, but can also be used for their value or item in the top left corner. More on mission cards and how missions happen shortly. Okay, so on your turn, there are three actions you can choose from, and you can do as many of these and in any order as you want. First one is to buy cards from the display. The second one is to place cards in your launch pad or onto your mission plan section on your board. And the third one is to just discard cards. After you've decided on all the actions you wanna do, there's a final optional action you can do it to end your turn, which is launch a mission. You don't have to do this, but if you do choose to do it, it has to be the last action you do on your turn and this will complete your turn. Let's jump into these now. To buy cards from the display, simply play cards from your hand to your playing area, making sure that the total value in the top left adds up to the cost of the card that you wish to buy. 
So to buy this card, I would need to spend 30 credits to my playing area. After you purchase a card, add it to your playing area, then immediately replace it with a new card from the top of the deck. You can buy multiple cards each turn. You can also opt to buy these limited face-up engine cards, but you may only buy a single engine card per turn. The next action you can do is to place cards on your mission plan or your launch pad. You may only place cards on your launch pad if you already have a mission on your mission plan. Otherwise, you'll need to place a mission down first. To place a mission, select a mission card from your hand and place it on your mission plan. You then have to pay for it. Every mission costs 10 credits regardless of which mission it is. You can either use another card from your hand that provides credits to pay for this by placing it in your plane area, or if the mission you are playing in your mission plan has a 10 credit value in the top left corner, it can actually pay for itself. This is very important to remember. So playing this satellite to your mission plan does not require any other cards to pay for it as it itself provides 10 credits and pays for itself. Let's quickly go over what the text on a mission card means. Each row on the mission card indicates where the mission can go, how much that mission costs, and how many mission success cards you'll flip over. The first column here shows the planets you can go to. For instance, this mission can go to all three planets, Earth, Moon, and Mars. Some missions can only go to two planets or even just one planet. The next column is the cost in rockets. So you will have to have a certain number of rockets in your launch pad area to be able to attempt a mission launch. So for instance, in order to send this mission to Earth, I require three rockets in my launch pad. Once I have three rockets there, I can choose to end my turn by launching a mission if I choose. Finally, this column indicates how many mission success cards you will draw to attempt to successfully make it to the indicated planet. Earth gets three cards, the Moon gets four, and Mars gets five. This hexagon box on the right indicates the spot on the board your mission token will go if you succeed. Simply refer to the area of the board for the planet you're wishing to fly to and find that particular hexagon symbol in that particular section. If you succeed in your mission, this is the spot you'll place your mission token. And finally, this spot on the bottom right indicates the reward you receive for completing the mission. Every mission awards you with an achievement token that you place on your board and gives you an ongoing benefit. Okay, now that we've covered mission cards in the mission plan area of your player board, let's talk about the launch pad. So the launch pad, again, you can only play cards there if you already have a mission card played. The launch pad is the area to the left of your player board, and every card that you play here will cost 10 credits, just like the mission plan. You specifically want to play cards that provide rockets or provide item symbols that will aid you in your mission. Some cards also have special abilities that you might want to play them to the launch pad for. All these cards, regardless of how they help, cost 10 credits each to play. And some cards can pay for themselves, such as the small rocket boosters. You also cannot play threat cards or cards that only provide credits into your launch pad. And you can't have duplicate asset cards in your launch pad either. If you have a card or an achievement icon that shows 20 credits on it, you can use this to pay for two separate cards to your mission or launch pad. However, you cannot split this cost between one launch pad or mission card and one purchase from the display. Display purchases and mission launch pad purchases are separate actions and money can't be split between them from a single source. And the last action you can choose to do on your turn is very simple, it's discard cards. You simply take cards from your hand and discard them to your playing area. You can choose to discard the mission plan card you've already played from play into your playing area if you decide you no longer want to embark on that mission. Okay, so the last part of a turn is the crux of the game and that is launching. So launching again is an optional action that you have on your turn. If you choose to do it, there's an entire step of processes we'll go through, so let's jump into that now. If you choose to end your turn by launching a mission, first check to make sure you have enough rockets to launch. Refer to the mission card and see how many rockets are required to fly to the destination you'd like to visit. Then count up your rocket icons from cards in your launch pad, and if you meet or exceed this number, you're allowed to launch. Next, for your chosen destination, refer to the symbol associated with that destination. Computer symbols for Earth, composite materials for the Moon, and biotechnology for Mars. For each of these symbols that are on cards in your launch pad for your chosen destination, you may start your rocket one spot higher on the mission track. So for instance, if my launch pad has two computer symbols and I'm attempting to visit Earth, I can start on the number two spot on the mission track instead of zero. This biotechnology symbol in my launch pad, however, doesn't do anything for me as it is the symbol for Mars, not Earth. You have to declare where you are attempting to fly to. Indicate this by placing one of your mission tokens on the desired destination. Now shuffle the mission success deck. 
you will draw an amount of cards equal to what is listed on your mission card for your desired location. In this case, I get three draws for attempting to make it to Earth. Draw a card from the deck and advance as many spaces as indicated on it. If you make it to your destination by the time you draw your last card, you have succeeded in your mission. When you succeed a mission, you take the mission token you place on that location and move it to the corresponding mission space that is shown in the hexagon of your mission card. If you are the first player to reach this spot, you place your token in the highest value spot of this particular location that only a single player can claim. Gain the points indicated. If you are not the first one here, place your token into the lower value spot that can house all remaining players and take this lower value in points. It's thus more advantageous to be the first player to location, hence where the space race portion comes into play. You will now gain the achievement token that corresponds with the reward for the mission you completed. Add it to your player board. For instance, this spaceship gains me one rocket token, which means I now have one permanent rocket that I can use to pay for future missions. There are two ways that a mission can fail. First, you can opt to abort the mission as long as it's before you draw the final card that you're allowed to draw. Simply announce you're aborting the mission, then discard an amount of cards from your launch pad equal to one less than the amount of mission success cards you drew before aborting. So if I drew two mission success cards and wasn't happy with the results, I could discard one card from my launch pad to abort the mission. You will also fail if you draw all the cards you were allowed to draw from the mission success deck, but don't reach the destination. In this case, you need to discard all cards from your launch pad. You can then optionally discard your mission card itself too, or you can keep it there and try again once you've built up your launch pad. The first person to complete a mission to the moon or to Mars gains the token on each respective planet. This token is worth one bonus point. Succeed or fail, simply move the rocket back to zero on the track, redraw to your hand size, and your turn is over. And that is basically the entire game flow for Rocketmen. There are three ways that the game can end though. One, a scoring marker reaches the threshold shown on the victory track for your indicated player count. Two, a player places all six of their mission tokens onto missions on the board, and there's at least one token on each planet amongst all the players. Or three, all players have placed all their mission tokens. In all cases, finish out the round so everyone gets equal turns. Then add bonus points for threat cards you collected, the moon and Mars tokens, as well as your personal goal cards, and the person with the most points wins. And that is basically how you play. But before I go, there are three things I want to touch on that you probably have questions about and that I want to get into a little bit more detail to help you understand. Those are personal goal cards, the achievement tokens, and card abilities. Let's jump into them now. Personal goals will show three specific destinations you need to travel to. You will usually gain one point for successfully making it to each of these destinations during the course of the game. At the bottom of the card, you will gain bonus points if you're the first one to a certain amount of these destinations, depending on your player count. In a two-player game, you need to be the first one to all of the locations to get the bonus points. In a three-player game, you need to be the first to two of the locations. And in a four-player game, you only need to be the first to one of them. You'll remember that you were dealt two personal goal cards at the start of the game. You won't score both. At the end of the game, you only choose one to score and you discard the other. Achievement tokens give you permanent enhancements. There are a few different types. These rocket achievement tokens give you permanent rockets to use on all your future missions. These don't get spent when you use them. You keep the token forever and essentially have a permanent discount on these missions. These tokens increase your hand size. Every one of these you collect increases your hand size by one. These give you permanent credits that you can use once per turn. I would have 20 credits that I can use on my turn by flipping this tile over. At the end of my turn, I would flip it back over and it can be used again next turn. This is a science token and it can stand in for any of the three item symbols in the game. You can use this token when purchasing other cards or as part of your launch to move the rocket up one space. Simply flip it over when you use it and flip it back at the end of your turn. And lastly, there are a bunch of different card abilities in the game. I won't go over them all. The rule book will cover them all and you'll discover them as you play, but they'll, they'll let you do things like removing cards from the game from your deck permanently, drawing extra cards, moving the rocket up on the, on the mission track uh, to start at a higher spot. There's a bunch of different abilities. The only thing I want to go over is there's some uh, four specific keywords that I think are important to understand. So I'm going to explain each of those for you. First is discard. This ability will optionally trigger when you choose to discard this card to your playing area. Otherwise, you can't trigger the ability. Launch pad, this ability can only be used when the card is present in your launch pad. Otherwise, you can only use the card for its monetary value or item icon in the top left. When used to pay, 
This ability triggers whenever you spend this card for its monetary value to buy a card, place a mission, or place cards in your launch pad. Otherwise, you can't trigger the ability. And finally, permanent. This card stays permanently in your launch pad and never gets discarded even when you succeed or fail a mission. It stays there forever. And that's all there is to Rocket Man. So obviously there's some intricacies here to learn with card abilities and stuff that you'll pick up as you play. There's also some variant cards that you can apply and put at the top of the board that will change up each game to give them each a different bit, a little bit of flavor. And there's also a solo mode you can explore as well. I'll let you discover that for yourself. It's in the rule book. Otherwise, that is how you play Rocket Man. Um, it, like I said, it, it seems like a complex game, but after you really get into it and understand the rules, turns will just fly by, so to speak. That was, that, was, that was awful, I know. Um, so if the turns will fly by, the game will seem to go by really quick and you'll really get a handle on things. Really, you're just gonna be learning the strategy um, and again, all the intricacies that come with the design. So I hope this video helped you out. I hope it helped you get to the table a little bit quicker. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave us a comment or a like or subscribe to the channel, tell a friend about us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.